Hey everybody, Professor Steins here. And today I'm going to make a little short video about brackets. Uh, a student introduced it to me a couple days ago and um, it's very interesting. I really convinced me to give it a shot and I did. And so far I really like what's here. So I'm going to make a little short video and share it with you. And if you like what you see, this is where you'll need to come to, brackets.io. And you can download this. In my web development classes, I usually suggest that people use Notepad++. Uh, it's a very good text editor. It's what I'm most familiar with, and I've been using it oh, more than half my life, I guess. Uh, but Brackets here is pretty neat, and I'll give it a shot and show you what I like about it. So after you download it, install it, and open it up, what you're going to get is uh, a window that kind of looks like this. Now, yours might be a little bit different. Uh, when I was going through and tinkering with it, uh, I, I went through the, uh, the different themes and tried to find a theme that I kind of liked. Uh, if you want to find a theme that you like, and this is a, kind of a light theme here, over on the right hand side where the little uh, Lego looking piece that's here, if you click on that, it's going to open up a little window and themes is going to be one of the options here. And from there we can find uh, lots of different themes, you can try them out. If you click on here you'll go to their website and they'll have some screenshots show you what they look like. Uh, I ended up kind of hitting a lot of them and, and trying to find one that I liked. So, I have a lot of them installed. Um, once you install them, though, to actually make them work, and you have to hit close, what you'll want to do is come up here to the top under View and go to Themes. And then from here, you can choose from any of the default themes. So, by default, yours probably looks a little bit different. The color scheme just looks a little bit different. And I kind of like that one, too, since there is more color in there for different uh, properties but I kind of ended up liking the uh, Visual Studio the best. And then I also bumped up the file, the, the font size to 18 picks. That way I, I hope it's pretty readable in the, the videos that I make. Uh, but there are kind of a lot of options that you can play around with if you want to kind of see what different, what kind of flavor of code editor you like. So that's the one I settled on, Visual Studio 18 picks. I think it's pretty readable. Uh, the other neat thing that's up here, that's the, uh, the little Lego extender, uh, but the other neat thing that's up here is the lightning bolt. So if you click on that, this is probably the, the most neat thing that's, that's with it, and, and the real reason why I'm trying to make this video about it is that uh, it's going to open up like this little Chrome window. It doesn't, it's not like my real Chrome window, I think it's like a built-in version of Chrome. But it's running a website on an IP address and a port number, and then the index.html files here. What the little lightning bolt thing is going to do, if we kind of, even if we just click in the browser here, it's going to kind of jump our code editor around to where we need to, uh, what we need to do with it. So that's actually under an A tag. I don't know why they do that. Uh, so if we like click on this H3 tag, it's going to kind of jump our code editor to where this H3 tag is at. I think that's pretty neat. Uh, the other neat thing is is that it's got kind of like a, a live code editing feature to it. So if we're looking at the getting started up here in the browser that's kind of above it, uh, that's in this H1 tag. So if we kind of edit that text in line, it's going to kind of edit the page as we do it. That's pretty neat too. Uh, we can kind of see our actions, uh, see our code while it's being built and see the where, you know, even one character might throw something off by mistake. So, that's pretty neat. Um, do you got to watch out, though? It's not actually saving these codes. Uh, and over on the left-hand side, as soon as I hover it over, it turns to an X. If it's got that little circle there, that means it's not saved. So, Control-S uh, will save it. Now, it actually won't let me save this file, uh, because this is kind of like the, the one that comes with the thing. So uh, one, one, what we can do is we can just kind of open up or go to our desktop rather and just create a, a folder for maybe just brackets uh, somewhere where we can just throw some test code in and we can go to file, open folder, uh, don't save those changes and then we'll go to the desktop and try to find uh, this brackets folder Gave me an error, but I think it I think it worked. Uh, let's try to create a new index.html file, and we'll just start off by uh, throwing in the doc type. 
get started and then maybe just uh, with these two tags. Control S to save or you can do that through the file menu uh, and then index.htm or index.html and hit save. So we've got our code highlighting back. Uh, it's our index.html file. Let's hit the little lightning bolt over here on the right and this is going to do that, that live code editing feature. So right now our page is blank. There's not much there. Even the title tag is not there. We're showing the uh, the IP address and the port number, your local host IP address and the port number. Uh, but as we start, let me pull this over so we can see it a little bit. As we start kind of working through uh, editing it, you can kind of see if I highlight, if I'm kind of in a tag, it highlights the opening and closing tag. That's pretty neat. I like that too. The other neat feature is that it kind of auto-closes tags and it gives suggestions. So I started typing title here. It's even giving me the suggestion for title. And then as soon as I close it, I just had to hit one key there. It automatically kind of closes the tag for me. So it's a little bit less typing that we have to endure and uh, that's, that's always a good thing. If you didn't notice when we did that though, the title tag over here changed. So hello world is now up there in the title tag. And even as we start uh, kind of building out our page a little bit, uh, our wrapper tag, ID wrapper, I'm just going to kind of auto-close those tags for us. I haven't gotten anything visual yet, have we? Header, still not visual, but uh, here's an H1 tag. And in the H1 tag, we can start with our hello world. So as we start typing that in, uh, two brackets. Kind of see our browsers automatically... Uh, automatically doing the thing. It's pretty awesome. Now, again, I'm not quite sold on this color scheme. I think it's pretty good. The home and, home and end keys work really well for me. Uh, in some text editors, if you're at the end of the line and hit the home key, uh, you'll go all the way back to the beginning of the line, but this one just kind of takes you to the front of that piece of line, which I think that's pretty good, too. Uh, home... So all my shortcut keys uh, feel pretty good. Uh, products and reviews. And it's pretty neat how the browser over there in the background is, is auto-updating as well. Gives me a pretty decent idea of what it's doing. Again, I'm not actually saving it. You probably do want to hit Control S and save things from time to time. It's actually live editing uh, against keystrokes, not even against the save button like I've done in some of the other videos. Let's see, uh, let's try to throw in just, uh, we didn't use any classes yet, so let's try a class equals box and see if we can't make some some boxes here or something. Again, kind of all my shortcut and Copy and paste keys all feel pretty pretty comfortable. Two and three. Four and five. Now over on the right, the little blue lines help me see where <laughs> uh, what what part of the thing I'm talking about. Can't actually see those box numbers, but they're all there. Footer. Uh, thanks for playing. Really neat. Uh, if we create a style sheet, it works pretty much the same way. Create a new style sheet. Uh, we can start by trying to type in some rules to uh, set some colors or something. Background color black. Uh, we're not getting the code highlighting here. We need to hit Control S to save it. Make sure that we include that as our style.css sheet, or whatever you want to name it. And that gives us our thing. Let's rewrite that rule again uh, and see how the code highlighting does for here, because this is really good too. So if I start trying to type in background color, kind of like Notepad++, it'll try to find uh, what you're trying to type. And it even has kind of some built-in words here for uh, what colors they are. So there's aqua, there's aquamarine. Uh, we could start a, kind of trying to type those in and use the code editor there. Well, you would think that that would have put aquamarine in. Let's stick with aqua. 
uh, another neat feature uh, that the code highlighting isn't enough is this little button right here at the top right. Split the editor vertically or horizontally. So I kind of looking short here, I could go with horizontal split. And right now style.css is up here and so is kind of index.html. That's kind of how you can kind of flip between them. But you can drag kind of one down to the bottom. Boom. So now you have your CSS up at the top and your or uh, CSS down at the bottom and your HTML up at the top. So you can kind of work on both files at the same time uh, to really see the effect. Uh, we're missing a link tag here to pull these two together, style.css. Uh, REL is style sheet. Uh, that's one bug. <laughs> I think I found a bug. If you start typing, try to use this. You know, most text editors like Notepad++, if you highlight the thing and you hit tab, it'll insert the word. It actually looks like it's trying to insert <laughs> the number of uh, spaces here to spell out style sheet, but it's not actually doing the not actually doing the word. Sidebar. Interesting. Uh, so maybe it's not maybe it helps you type it but not actually finish it for you. So as soon as we typed in our style sheet we could see that the, the background rule came into play. Again, we can kind of click on different parts of the web browser even and get transported to the HTML where that takes place. Uh, if you're not a vertical split or a horizontal split, there's also a vertical split, which is going to look hard on the video because you really have to have both the, this editor open really big to get that effect. Now, I do have a second monitor, um, which is super helpful in programming to have lots of screen space.